what was found among them? It says strife was found among them. Strife. And this is the opposite of gentleness. Look with me. Luke 22. Are we there, my friends? So it's time for us to examine ourselves. How have we been living for the past few days? The past few months? And yet we profess that we are marching to Zion. We profess that we're going home when Christ returns. It's time for self-examination. It's time for God to show us we are not ready. For God to show us we are playing games with our spirituality. Luke 22, are we there, my friends? In Luke 22, God's word says this. In verse number 24, let's read this together, what it says. And there was also a strife among them. And how was this strife manifested? Read on. Which of them should be accounted the greatest? So what was found among Christ's close-knit disciples? If we were back then, we would look at Christ's disciples and call them present truth believers, would we not? These are present truth believers. These are God and God's end time messengers, God's end time missionaries. Yet what was found among those who claimed present truth during Christ's earthly ministry? What was found among them? Strife. And how was that strife manifested? Who should be accounted the greatest? As I began to look at our pioneers' writings on this, E.J. Wagner, A.T. Jones clearly said that this was a sign that they were having politics in the church who should be accounted the greatest strive question at this time were they manifesting the fruit of the spirit were they manifesting the fruit called gentleness no why because gentleness is opposite from what trait of character strive who should be accounted the greatest? Does this represent pride? Yes. Does this also signal selfishness? Yes. Who should be accounted the greatest? Strive. Look with me. Do you know the context of Luke 22? What now? They were about to crucify Jesus. And what two entities united to crucify Christ? to persecute him and put him on the cross church and state in this crucial hour what was on the minds of Christ's present truth believers James, John, Peter, Andrew and the rest what was on their mind? strive who should be accounted the greatest what over here? I heard a word over here position what that word again? Position, write down, you who said that, write down, testimonies for the church. Volume 7, page 28, inspiration says, one truth that will stand out in clear, distinct line. That position would not prepare a man for entrance into the heavenly courts. Volume 7, testimonies, 28. This is strife. Who should be accounted the greatest? While probation was about to close. Watch this. Christ's earth and ministry was coming to an end. I want to ask a question. Are we living in a time when Christ's heavenly ministry is about to come to an end? What were the present truth believers doing when his earth and ministry was about to come to an end? Strive. Who should be the greatest? And as Christ's heavenly, priestly work, investigative judgment is about to come to a close, then type any type. What is encumbering the minds of God's professed people? Strive. Who should be accounted the greatest? And one application of this is woman's ordination in the church. Who should be accounted the greatest? We are just like men. Do the, the work of a, of a man. Elder and pastor. Strive. NAD versus 
the general conference of SDA, strive who should be accounted the look with me. That means these individuals are not manifesting what? The fruit of the spirit while they profess to be leaders within God's remnant movement. Luke 22. God's word says in verse number 20, skip on down to verse 21. Are we there? It says, but behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table. And truly, the Son of Man goeth as it was determined. But woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. To whom did Judas go to to get Christ crucified? To whom? He went to church leaders. And who did the church leaders go to? So the church and state unite to persecute and crucify Christ. Yet what was on the mind of the present truth believers, profess once in verse 24, strive who should be accounted the... Go to Luke 9 with me. Where are we going to, friends? Luke chapter 9. Go there with me. Luke the 9th chapter. And notice here in Luke chapter 9, God's word says... In verse number, look with me, verse number 44 of Luke chapter 9. Now, don't touch your ears, but kind of just recall you all have ears, right? Because Christ is going to say something about our ears. Look at verse 44. Are we there? Jesus said to his close-knit group of disciples, let these sayings do what? Sink down into your ears. What did Christ want to be sunk down into their ears? Read on. For the Son of Man shall be delivered into the hands of men. And what two groups united to persecute Christ? So he says, let these words sink deep into your ears. Church and state are now uniting to persecute, crucify me, which will bring a time of trouble on you. What is Christ also saying to us? Let these words sink deep into your ears. And look at verse number 46. Look what happened now. Verse 46 says what now? Then there arose a reasoning among them. What are the next six words? Which of them should be greatest? Are we now seeing signs that church and state are now uniting? Which will bring about the enforcing of the Sunday law crisis and persecution for those who refuse to bow. Are we here? Then what are we to be bearing, manifesting the fruit? Oh, tell me. Tell me. The fruit of the Spirit. And what is the fifth part of the fruit? gentleness and what is in contrast to gentleness based on our study so far strive who should be accounted the greatest now what happened november 8th 2016 what happened mr trump wins the what the presidency is this a sign church and state are now uniting is this a sign church and state are now uniting I wonder, do you know many folks didn't expect it? I wonder what swept him into office. Look at this. It says here, this is Time Magazine. What did Mr. Trump vow and promise the religious leaders in America? If they voted for him, what would he do? Let's read that. Donald Trump vowed to do what? To close the gap between what between church and state to close that gap what would be the end result a unification of church and state are we together my friends now it doesn't matter if if hillary had won it'd be the same thing same thing but we're seeing something here you know someone sent me an email saying pastor i was watching the the election and i said Lord, he said, Lord, if Hillary wins, no, no, he said, Lord, if you are saying that we have uh, 
much more time to get ready let Trump win and if we are out of time the end is here let Hillary win he said he went to bed and woke up and Trump won he said praise God we have more time either one I want to ask you a question do you know before I finish that that uh, testimony there let me come here uh, right here where in the Bible do we find God saying he's going to delay his coming do you know there's only one place after 1844 only one time inspiration says the Lord wanted to come very shortly after 1844 specifically in the time period of 1888 since that time where do we find god telling us he is delaying delaying what every sin that we commit wounds him what is he delaying what is he delaying god is not in delaying anything friend no he wants to come but we aren't ready it's long suffering but the clock is ticking it's almost midnight it's almost the end. The alarm is going to ring very shortly. There's no more time for delay. So where did this mindset come from? If Hillary wins, time is over. If Trump wins, then we have much more time. That is not biblical. Time is almost finished, my friends. What is he saying? He's going to bring about a what? A union of church and state as Bible-believing Christians. What does this signal? Persecution for God's people because this will bring about a passing of a Sunday law. Forcing people to worship on Sunday so God can bless America in various aspects of life. Calamity, let's stop that. The financial uh, issues, stop that. God must bless America. Time is almost finished. Look at this. He said this year, Mr. Trump, what did he promise? He promised evangelical pastors. What, my friends? We are going to get your voice back. Now, where in the Bible do we find those words? The church having a voice to influence somebody else. It's, go there with me. Chapter 13 of Revelation. And verse number 15. Speaking about Protestant America. Verse number 15. He had power to give life unto the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both what? Speak. And what? Cause. That as many as would not worship, the image of the beast should be killed. Verse number 14 says. Verse 14 and deceive them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast let's read now saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast the church will have a voice saying make the image and mr trump is saying yes that's my objective and friends look at this look what Mr. Trump promised. Look at this. This is October 2016. Headline. Read the letter Mr. Trump wrote to Catholic leaders. Skip on down. It says, in discussions, Mr. Trump said, in discussions with my Catholic advisory group. Let that sink in. Should I be elected president? I look forward to working with these two respected leaders of the Catholic Church in America. Their whom? Their brother bishops and, uh, what is that? Church and state. Congress on issues of critical importance to whom? To the Catholic Church and Catholics. He said, I have a message for Catholics. I will be there for you. I will stand with you. I will fight for you on issues and policies of greatest concern to Catholics. I will stand with Catholics and what? Fight for you and fight with you. And what did they do as a result? 